So basically, you guys are familiar with the DS family. This is another iteration of that. Um, you know it's already available as a head. We're working on the total right now. That should be out in the next year. For everyone who's not clear on this, this procedure is always done with a PRC. Um, that's a point I'm going to be hitting on over and over again, where a lot of other companies have tried arthroplasties of the wrist. They, they approach it like a traditional joint. We are approaching this as we like the PRC as a motion uh, preserving procedure, and we're going to improve on it. So I want to talk a little bit about the traditional PRC, first of all. Um, um, that is the removal of the proximal row of the bones in the wrist. So the scaphoid, the lunate, the triquetrum, you can see an x-ray below. So the capitate actually drops down and it begins to articulate with the radius. Uh, this is one of two of the really popular motion uh, sparing procedures right now. It's this in the four corner fusion. One of the problems with the PRC is that it's for a, a pretty narrow band of population. If the capitate has already started to develop arthritis, this procedure traditionally won't work. And uh, it's hard to tell if the capitate has arthritis just from the x-ray. Uh, like a chylectomy, you don't really know what you're going to get until you go in there. So people kind of get scared away just because they can they can get in there and realize it's not really what they expected. And they know with the four-corner fusion, it's going to be the same every time. They're just fusing four bones. Um, another problem that the traditional PRC can have is that when this capitate drops down, it doesn't have the same curvature as the bone that was once there. So that can lead uh, to capitate wear, which will shorten the life of the procedure, uh, and a little bit of a loss in grip strength because the bone that drops down is slightly smaller. So it's got a little more wiggle room when you go to grasp and stuff. What we do is we come in and we put a DF cap on the capitate. This helps us uh, in three main ways. The first is that if they get in there and see that there's arthritis on the capitate, that's not a deal breaker at all. Um, so that opens up a huge population. Um, we measure off the radius and then put the curvature of the bone that was once there onto the capitate. So we put the lunate curvature into our implant. So there's a, con there's a congruent uh, articulation there. That's better range of motion, smoother motion, and uh, better grip strength because there's no wiggle room when you go to squeeze. The capitate won't really yield at all. Also, since it's resurfaced, its lifetime is significantly increased. Um, you don't really expect any wear of that. As far as indications, we're pretty much cleared for generally all arthritis of the wrist and even rheumatoids. Talking more about the indications, the big ones that you're going to hear a lot is slack wrist and snack wrist. Uh, sometimes people talk about them together, but they're 55% of wrist arthritis, and that's basically when the, the scaphoid has something wrong. It's either has a ligament uh, start to chronically be injured, or it's going to actually have a non-union because of a fracture that's already happened. And once that scaphoid starts to give, the whole wrist eventually will degenerate. So typically with the PRC, you have to, to catch it in stage two. Uh, once it went to stage three, you can no longer do the PRC, so you have to go to a four-corner fusion. And that's where people li like the four-corner fusion because it's, it's a wider, wider population. They know what they're doing for every patient. They don't have to make the call in the case. Uh, also, we can do this on failed PRCs. Uh, they fail because the capitate wore down. And since we're rebuilding the capitate, that'll be fine. And we can even do some unfusions. Uh, we've actually already done one of them where they took some staples out of an old four-corner fusion, put this in the capitate, and so far that has been going well. SLAC stands for scapholunate advanced collapse. It's the most common arthritis you'll see in the wrist. And on the x-ray here, you can kind of see the stages. In the first stage, the scaphoid marked S is starting to rub up on the radius, which is marked R. Um, by stage two, the the arthritis is, has moved over across the radius, and by stage three, it's on the capitate. So the, the amount of pain they'll feel in stage two doesn't always warrant a surgery. So those people won't be caught. By the time it gets to stage three, the person's really in pain. It's a lot of their range of motion is gone, and that's when they go to get their surgery. So we've already missed the window. So snack wrist is basically, it's the same idea. Where slack wrist was the scapholunate ligament um, having a chronic instability. Snack wrist is where the scaphoid is fractured at some point. It's just not healing right. 
but the degeneration moves across the wrist in the same way. So we, we lose them by stage three, or typically they would have lost them by stage three. With our cap, stage three is good. So Kienbach's disease uh, is AVN of the lunate. That's a unique one because you can't do a full corner fusion to it. But um, by stage four of Kienbach's disease, the bone around the lunate starts to degenerate. So that would also rule out a traditional PRC. So in all these common common uh, illnesses or diseases, there's a window of opportunity to do a PRC, but that window is short and it's usually missed. We're coming through and saying, now you can do it at all stages of these diseases, which is going to open up a huge population. And it, we uh, anticipate that if a doctor knows he can go in and do his PRC or put a cap on it and do a PRC, he's more likely, where in the past he could he would go in there and say, all right, well, I'm not doing a PRC now. Give me a whole new set of instruments. So it's a new procedure. This slide just kind of illustrates the change of curvature. So you can see the diameter of the lunate that was there is much rounder, and you're dropping this little sharp capitate into it. So that promotes the wear, that promotes the motion in the joint, which also causes a grip strength loss. And this is a great uh, illustration to show the doctors that you're selling, because you say, look, PRC is great, but you can see obviously that the articular uh, cartilage isn't the same shape. So come through with our cap and it's all good. Durability of our hemi is going to be a huge selling point. Basically all wrists on the market, the, the totals and the hemis loosen over time. Um, there was one study that 39 out of 40 in the study loosened. Um, papers say that the uh, total risks of the highest revision cases in major cities. So people are going to hear either a risk total and instantly say, that, no, they suck, they're going to loosen. We can come through and say, we're, we have proven screw and uh, cat fixate. We have it in the first met in over 30,000 people. No instances of loosening, and it's only implanted in one bone, where all the other systems have screws and plates in three or four bones while building it up. Uh, our screw is a 7.5 by 15 millimeter uh, taper post. That was one of the quiz questions. So here's a picture of the four corner fusion. In the four corner fusion, first you're taking out the scapegoat, basically where all problems in the wrist start, and then fusing the rest so that the lunate actually stays in there, and that's the articular surface that they're building up. So where the four corner fusion is reinforcing the lunate, we're taking it out in, in, in literature the PRC performs better in range of motion. Um, there's a stigma that says that grip strength is better in the four corner fusion, but all these long-term papers are coming out. One came out a couple months ago from 17 years in the comparison, and grip strength is the same. So when people are gonna say, oh, I like the four corner fusion because I like the grip strength, you can come through with papers that I'll send to all you guys and say that's, that's not the case, it's actually equivalent. And the complication rates of four corner fusions is significantly higher. Uh, in this paper that I have quoted in the bottom, it's two times as high. In the 17-year follow-up that I'm going to send out, it's four times as high. So the four corner fusion is a lot more technically difficult, and you end up with the non-unions, which end up being, being revised to usually a total fusion, which is no good. Kind of reiterates what I've already said. Um, four corner fusion and PRC are the two motion-preserving procedures out there. The, the range of motion on the PRC is about 15 degrees better, and that can be the 15 degrees between being able to comfortably play golf and tennis and not being able to play. So that's a huge factor to some of these patients. Uh, four corner fusion is more technically difficult. Um, doctors still tend to go with the four corner fusion because they're used to fusion. It seems more anatomic to them. But now we come back and say, well, we're resurfacing the cap state with the lunates. Our so we have that anatomic articulation back. Um, also, four corner fusions do not decompress the joint at all, which uh, a lot of papers say that some of the pain in wrist arthritis comes from the swollen bones and, and, and overstuffed joint. Obviously, since we're taking bones out, there's no issue with uh, over compression or pain caused by compression. And Traditionally, they criticize the PRC small patient population, but with our DF style cap, it, it opens up the uh, population to just about everyone that a four corner fusion could address. So since it is a wrist hemiarthroplasty, you're probably going to hear people compare it to the totals that are out there. 
and they'll be quick to tell you how bad they are, uh, that they all loosen. You can see on the left is Biomet, in the center is SDI, and on the right is uh, Integra. And you can see where they have a stem that goes through the capitate. They have screws that go off in between at least one or two carpal bones. Some even go into the metatarsal. So just over the course of that person's life, those those will continue to move at least on a micro level. There's typically going to be a non-union and something's going to come loose. So you need to make it very clear, very quickly, that our hemiarthroplasty is nothing like the arthroplasty of here. It's an entirely different rationale. We're not doing the traditional buildup of what we think should be there. We're saying we, we like the PRC. We're improving on that. That's kind of you got to make sure that they don't get in their head that this is just another total or another hemi because they're going to not buy into it if that's the case. So basically we just tried to come up with a little uh, mock conversation with the doctor. You're going to want to start off showing images and showing models just to get it in their hair quickly what we're trying to do so they can see it's a PRC that's improved. It's not just another total or hemi out there. Once they get it in their head or once they see what we're actually trying to do, you can ask them, do they like PRCs? Do they tend to get more corner fusions? If they like the PRC, you're, you're in a great spot because they've already bought it to the non-anatomic joint. You can say now that, all right, well, now we can do a PRC for a lot more of your people that you would have to fuse otherwise. So they can take the procedure they already like and expand it to more of their patients. If they say, I like the four corner fusion, you got to follow up and ask why they like that. They might say, uh, like the grip strength better. But you can come back with data and say that's that's not true. Um, so the um, range of motion data long term, where range of uh, the PRC will actually be, and then you can kind of bring up the higher complication rate. Also, if they bring up the fact that they like the lunate articulating with the radius because that's more anatomic, then you segue into talk about how we choose our curvatures based off the radius and prescribe the anatomic direct curvature. Uh, and then if, the, if they're already doing wrist arthroplasties, the big thing you want to sell them on is the, the durability of our system because if, if, they're, if they've bought into the idea that they're going to be resurfacing these bones, then, then they'll have no problem understanding our procedure, but we can market how ours won't loosen because they'll be familiar with those and they'll know that it's a complicated procedure with lots of cuts and lots of places to go wrong and loosen. Uh, the designing surgeon for this problem, uh, for this procedure, is Dr. Randall Culp. He's the name to drop first because he's very, very well known. He's a big talker. Um, he's in Philadelphia. He's about 200 fellows that we're trying to contact. Uh, also, Dr. Insak Yee in Denver, Colorado, and Dr. Cheryl in Alabama. Um, just to recap, this system is fundamentally different from the other arthroplasties out there. So make sure that they don't get it stuck in their head, that this is just another hemi. Um, the selling points are that we've taken the PRC, which is a great motion sparing procedure, but it has a couple shortcomings and basically dashed them all. We've increased the patient population, increased the durability of the joint. We've, we've matched the articular uh, curvatures to make it perfectly uh, congruent. And uh, it's a much more simple procedure. To very quickly kind of go back to uh, the how you're going to sell against four corner fusion and just kind of because I think that's the biggest thing I'm coming up against is talking to guys like you know hey listen four corner fusion they they work great for my patients uh, you know implants out there suck and and even to get them past their the point of or get get them to the point of talk to them about our implant you gotta you gotta talk to them about you know, the difference uh, between us and four corner fusion. So I just want to sure. go over that again. Okay, so I brought it back up. Basically, if, if they're already happy with the four corner fusion, the, the strategy is going to be to pry them for a reason why they prefer it. So basically, you just want to get the doctor talking about why they like it because any metric that they bring up, we will actually outperform them in. Um, the range of motion, long term, we beat them in. Um, the the technical difficulty of the procedure, we beat them in. The grip strength, the, so a lot of people just assume grip strength is, strength is better because they hear fusion, but we have papers now that say that's not the case. Um, they'll talk about it being more anatomic, that's why they like it. 
we say, well, that's not really the case anymore either because now we're putting the right articular curvature on there. Um, and then you can say, well, what about what about your case of non-unions or how often are you revising these to total risk because that is actually going to be a, a pretty big factor for them. That's 30% uh, of four corner fusions uh, go to total risk eventually and patients definitely do not like that. So try to get them to give you a number or a reason and then you can kind of counter that. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll type up a better little cheat sheet of all the metrics and compare them so that way you guys can have it quicker. Um, just so you guys know, in, in cases where the cap date doesn't match the lunate at all, it, it's actually kind of a shorter lifespan. So I saw Cajun ask, why is the contradiction uh, less than 35? It's because eventually the cap date will wear down if it's a, if it's a bad mismatch. So it's, this isn't like the permanent fix, and that's why they tend to be with older people.